So I need to drive some servo motors. Um, I've got a range of servo motors here. I've got quite a small one over here. I've got 10 of these for £12 off of eBay. So they're really cheap. They're not particularly uh, powerful, but uh, because they're so cheap, it's easy to use them in projects and at uh, low cost. And I've got one here which I've had for must be 20 years now. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a medium power servo motor. Then I've got a really powerful servo motor here. Uh, and these can sort of drive up to about 20 kilograms. Apparently they stall at about 20 kilograms. Uh, whereas uh, the, the, these other ones aren't as powerful as that. So to drive these uh, servo motors, I've put together a little circuit. Uh, I've got a PIC microcontroller on here. Now some PIC microcontrollers, they actually have built-in hardware where you can just drive uh, servo motors directly um, from a PWM driver. So they're driven by pulse width modulation. Um, and on this one, uh, it doesn't have the pulse width modulation hardware, so I'm having to drive the pins manually myself. And I've got eight pins, so there's two pins needed to power the PIC microcontroller. And then one of the pins is uh, uh, input only, so I can't use that to drive them. But it, that leaves me five pins over, which I can use for outputs. So I'm going to use this PIC microcontroller to drive up to five servo motors. And then the input pin I'm going to use to uh, communicate to the PIC controller and tell it what to, what to do with the servo motors. And this is just a test circuit I've put together here, which I'll, which I'll use in this video to show it working. So I'm going to um, use a lithium-ion battery to, to power them. Uh, I've got a regulator, voltage regulator here, but that's not going to be used uh, when I'm using this lithium-ion battery. So this, this uh, battery runs at 3.7 volts. Um, these servo motors, I think they're rated at typically 5 volts, uh, and I think some, some of them you can actually power a bit higher than 5 volts, maybe 6 volts. Uh, but they seem to work okay on this 3.7 volt, at least for this demonstration. And the lithium ion it can uh, deliver quite high currents, so it makes it ideal for using on driving motors. So I'll power that up, and I've got um, five sets of connections which I can put these servo motors onto. Um, so if I plug them in one at a time, so the wires on the servo motors, uh, there's three wires, and typically it goes um, ground, power, and then the control in signal so I've got the ground nearest me on this circuit and I'll power them from left to right so this uh, motor is now running and what I'm doing is I'm stepping it uh, around um, 256 steps in its rotation so uh, they rotate about 180 degrees some of them rotate slightly more than 180 degrees and I've divided that up into 256 steps uh, which I'm um, using as a demonstration here um, I'll plug in these other ones as well to show them all running. So th this one's now running too. Step in very, very small steps. Uh, but I, I just wanted to be able to um, sh show uh, m multiple motors running off of uh, one microcontroller. <laughs> So that there's a really powerful motor. So they they step um, individual steps um, of one two hundred fifty six of a um, of the rotation, and then they rotate back uh, to the beginning, and they just keep cycling through that as as this uh, demonstration program. What I'll do is I'll go on to explain how the step how the um, motors are actually driven, uh, and then I'll show the waveform on an oscilloscope as well. So to drive one of these servo motors, uh, you need to create, say on a timeline, in sections of 20 milliseconds. So if you divide up time into 20 milliseconds, uh, each 20 milliseconds you can give the servo motor a pulse, and depending on the width of the pulse, will position the actual servo motor into a specific position. Uh, so Anything from, I believe it's between one and three milliseconds typically uh, will set the position. So if you uh, give it a pulse of one millisecond, it will rotate the servo all the way in one direction. Uh, but if you give it a pulse of three milliseconds, it will rotate the servo motor all the way in the opposite direction. And then to position it anywhere in between that, you give it a pulse between uh, 
one and three milliseconds uh, relative to how far you want the actual server motor to actually be driven. So in my program, I uh, set up a timer in the pick mode controller to give me a, a, a um, interrupt every 20 milliseconds. And then when I get that interrupt, I then set the pin that I require to be high for the specific amount of time that I need to move it to position where I need it to go. And that's actually very easy to program. So once you've set up the pick mode controller to give you interrupts, uh, that code is then run and you don't need that code anymore. And then you only have to worry in the interrupt of setting the, the width of the pulse to however far you need it to be as a proportion of uh, between one and three milliseconds. So I've got the oscilloscope here uh, showing the width of the pulse off of one of the connectors. And as you can see, it's very slowly getting narrower and narrower, the pulse, as I reduce the, uh, the actual width of the pulse, which will be turning the motor step by step in my steps of uh, 126 of, a, uh, of the full travel, which is about 180 degrees on most servo motors, although some, some servo motors actually travel a bit more than 180 degrees. Um, they all seem to travel in the same kind of position, um, except uh, I think because of tolerances between different makes and things, uh, they do uh, actually do slightly different travel. Uh, this, this is about to step back out to the full width again when it gets down to the minimum width, but it doesn't actually go down to zero. zero. It goes go down to like about a millisecond or so, and then it goes uh, back up to the full width again. And so it would rotate them all the way in the opposite direction and start stepping down again, as, as you saw. Uh, 